Hello, heathens, and welcome to Spinning the Wheel podcast with me, your labyrinthine host, Megan Angus. And this week, we are going to be discussing Yule season, New Moon in Capricorn, Lunar Week 45 by some lunar calendars. Let's get into it. All right. Before we get into all of the whatnot that we have to discuss this week, and, you know, as usual, there's a lot, uh, let me um, bring us back to last week. I was talking about potentially doing a Venus retrograde something something video talk whatever for my patrons uh, i have decided to not do that um i encourage you all to check out my friend amanda moreno's uh aquarian spirals podcast she has a really great episode on this venus retrograde how to work with it what all other stuff it connects to um I am going to uh, do something on Jupiter, which has just moved into Pisces um, and is going to be doing some pretty interesting stuff uh, over the course of this year. Um, and so I'm going to throw up a thing for my patrons about that pretty soon. Um, but I just wanted to touch base on that. Okay, let's get on to the rest of the stuff. Uh <laughs> To orient us on the wheel, we are in Yule season. We just celebrated winter solstice, you know, what, two weeks ago, less than two weeks ago. Um, and we are in the very dark heart of the underworld journey, um, all of us here in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, and, you know, it's only up from here. The days are only going to get longer and brighter, but it's still going to be dark and cold for a while. So we've we've got stuff to do. We've got Yule season underworld journey work to do. Okay, so when we are in Yule season, our witch's work is returning to source, uh, focusing on um, symbolism and ritual and spellcrafting and archetypal work around death and rebirth, um, archetypes and deities that are embodiments of wisdom, and of course, ancestor work in all of its myriad forms. That's a, that's a huge body of work in and of itself. And when we look around the planet and we see uh, what holy days are being celebrated by people past and present, um, we see a lot of the same themes. Life, death, and rebirth, transformation, ancestor work, enlightenment stuff, uh, wisdom stuff, and the birth or the rebirth or the return of the, the solar deity, the light deity, the paternal deity uh, in alignment with um, this uh, quarter fire festival, um, throughout time and all across the planet. We're seeing all of these gods in particular, sometimes it's a goddess, but lots and lots of gods that are light gods, solar gods, or the paternal, uh, God or the paternal founder of the religion are going through a, a life, death, rebirth, sleep and awakening, leaving and coming back kind of a vibe. <laughs> um, for lots and lots and lots and lots of information on that, go watch my winter solstice class, the Yule class, a six-week guide to winter solstice. It's free up on YouTube. Okay, uh, let's move on to the actual stuff of what we're doing this week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and tiny ad, you know, I've been trying to throw in more ads. Thanks for putting up with it. Um, if you haven't yet, please give this podcast a rating. Uh, if you listen to it on Patreon, um, leaving a comment, I love listening or love reading the comments. That just makes me feel good. Um, if you listen to this podcast on Anchor or Spotify or Apple Podcasts or whatever it is, please go give this a rating. Um, leave a leave a comment if you can. Um, all of that good stuff. It really helps out. The algorithms absolutely love it, and so do I. Okay, let's get on to this week. 
All right, our lunar week starts January 2nd with a new moon in Capricorn at 12 degrees. It will be exactly at that degree at 10.33 a.m. Pacific Standard Time later in the day for everybody else around the planet. Okay, so on the surface or in general, this new moon is really fantastic for creating or working on your blueprint for the next year, right? It's Capricorn. That's all about that, you know, long vision of our, our arc in our career or the trajectory of like where we're trying to head in the next decade or whatever, right? Capricorn's got that long view, right? And very focused on the physical world and wanting to create things and wanting to create things of, you know, lasting value and all of that stuff. And of course, new moons, fantastic time for starting things, right? So it's like the start of the start of the start. It's also really, really cool. Side note, just from a pagan witchy, witchy perspective, that our new moon is actually lining up with our calendar. That's really cool. <laughs> and it's producing an interesting phenomenon this month as well for us here in uh, America on the West Coast. Um, folks in Alaska, Hawaii will get to participate in uh, having two new moons in the month of January. Um, I'll get into that more in just a second. But um, actually, I'm going to get into it right now. Uh, this is something that isn't true for almost everybody else around the planet. The new moon is going to be on February 1st for just about everybody else around the planet. But for us on the very far western edge of the day, because <laughs> time is weird, um, we uh, will actually get the new moon on January 31st. So we get a new moon here at January 2nd, and then another new moon January 31st. Of course, that's our 29 and a half days. That is our typical lunar cycle. Um, so for us here on the, on the West Coast of America at all, um, this also means that we are not going to have a new moon in February. Now, our new moon falls at like 930 at night or whatever it is. So if you want to just ignore that whole thing <laughs> and be like, whatever, we have a new moon in February. It's close enough. Cool. Go for it. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Uh, let's move on. That's that's just what I wanted to say about that. It's an interesting thing. It's not happening for part of the world. It is happening for some of the world. Um, again, because time is weird. All right. Uh, okay. So back to this new moon here on, on January 2nd. Uh, it is a new moon in Capricorn. It's happening right at the beginning of the calendar year. It's a lot of cool synchronicity around starts, initiations, beginnings, births, all that stuff. Now, um, Jessica Lanyato has a really great uh, astrology podcast called Ghost of a Podcast. And she's talking a little bit about uh, some of the problems that this Capricorn moon has. It's not perfect for starting things. It's not ideal. I'm not going to get into all of that. What I want to get into is this. Last week, what we talked about was some pretty tough stuff that we were sort of dredging up from our, you know, internally around um, goals and aspirations and, you know, all of this work around uh, working with other people and, and, you know, like, what are my motivations and all of this stuff, right? We were dealing with some really boggy stuff last week. Well, we're going to keep doing that this week. <laughs> um, it's not so bad, though. We do have a little reprieve every now and then. But, but here, you know, this Capricorn moon is saying like, hey, let's look at the blueprint. Let's focus on the future. Let's like get the plan figured out and all of that stuff. But the emotional work of this Capricorn new moon centers around looking at times where we felt like we were left out or excluded or left behind or uninvited. <laughs> it's always fun stuff, right? <laughs> Remember that we left, as I was saying, we left off last week with challenging ourselves to gain some ground in this coming year in whatever way we can, right? Even if it's like a 1% bar on the progress level, like, great, we at least got that. Um, well, here's the thing. 
that internal dialogue, that internal conversation around pushing yourself and achieving goals and all of that stuff often can drudge up a whole laundry list of why we can't do the thing or why we will never do the thing or achieve the goal or whatever it is. And in that conversation, um, what can come up uh, is like all of the folks or the circumstances that held you back or deprived you of opportunities or maybe that's the way that we interpret that now when we look back at our past. Um, all of the trauma that you may have experienced previous in your life that's ultimately stunted your progress. Fun stuff, right? Like, again, like super fun stuff. <laughs> well, it's important to come back to these conversations specifically to see if that stuff is actually still true, to see if it was ever true, and to see if you know, whether or not you may have actually grown into a place where you have more agency than you had previously in your life. Yule season is all about ghosts, right? It's a lot of ha ha jolly bullshit there for, you know, a couple of days. But in truth, <laughs> Yule season is spooky. And it's really about dealing with ghosts. And on this moon, um, we're dealing with the ghosts of projected futures that we could have had, quote unquote, if only. You get me? You see, you see what I'm saying? That stuff that's like buried in us <laughs> and the things that we, that we, again, these, the ghosts of projected futures. It came to me very strongly as I was working with, you know, my notes around this week. It was like, oh, wow. What it brought up for me personally, hey, tangent, here we go. It's already seven minutes in. I'm going off. Um, what it brought up for me specifically was this. When I was in junior high and high school, I played violin and I played pretty well. I was not amazing, but I was good and I enjoyed it. But I had to drop out of high school to get a job at some point. And uh, I never went back to that type of training with that instrument. I never pursued it further. Instead, what I developed was a narrative in my mind around the idea that if only I had had uh, you know, a more stable home life, or if only I had had a teacher that really supported me or whatever, I would have become this world famous concert violinist, traveling all over playing my violin, yada, yada, yada. And I carried that with me for a really long time. And I didn't play music during that time period at all. I certainly didn't play normal instruments. I might bang on stuff or yell in a band or something like that, but I wasn't taking my musicianship seriously in any way because I had missed out on my opportunity. And then thank the gods, <laughs> I finally got over myself at some point and came to my senses um, because I simply said to myself, you have no idea how that would have turned out. You may, what if you had had all of the stability in the world or all of the support in the world? You might have, you know, gotten out of high school, gotten into college, gotten a music degree, gone overseas, studied, in, you know, who knows what, right? Ended up in some world famous orchestra and absolutely fucking hated it. Oh, I, I, you know, I was like, finally, like I had to break this spell that I had cast over myself about this future that I supposedly was missing out on when I finally realized like, even if all of the things had lined up that I think I would have wanted then, <laughs> um, you know, who knows how it would have turned out? Who knows? Who knows? And so this moon really starts out with like challenging us to open up some of those narratives about the road not taken and why we were deprived of that opportunity or stunted in that way and asking ourselves, were we really, was I actually deprived in some way? Did I really miss out on something? And, and to what end am I 
telling myself this story? What's the point here? It, because what it seemed, you know, I mean, in my personal experience, what it did was it kept me from creating, which in retrospect, that's <laughs> that's not cool, right? <laughs> Seems like everybody missed out on that one for a couple of years. So that's kind of where we're starting this week. Super cash, no big deal. <laughs> but we are walking up to the ghosts of um, projected futures that have a whole lot of, if only I could have had this, if only I would have had this, if only this had happened, if only this person had supported me, if only this thing hadn't been in my way, I would have been da 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 da. Now, sometimes these stories are true. Sometimes we're not projecting ghosts into the, you know, of, of futures past. We are looking at unfair bullshit circumstances that we were served that truly deprived us of an opportunity. And that sucks, but you know what? We're here now. So what are you going to do with that? That's really the work of this new moon in Capricorn is asking you, hey, you've got all these stories that you tell yourself about why you didn't have this or why you couldn't have that or why this never worked out or why you never had a, a chance at X, Y, Z. In the most loving way I can possibly say, who gives a shit? What are you doing now? What are you doing with today? What are you doing with the air that's in your lungs right now? What are you doing with the hands that you have right now? And I realize that's kind of harsh. Hi, uh, fire sign. Um, <laughs> so again, I'm saying that in a truly loving way to myself and to all of us at the same time. You know, we don't know that any of those woulda, coulda, shouldas would ever have resulted in the, the thing that we are romanticizing and projecting. We really don't. What are we doing with what we have now? That thing. Coming back to my notes. <laughs> there is a shitload of unfair stuff in this life. This moon encourages you to get real with yourself in the most maturely optimistic way possible about what agency and ability you have developed in your life. Woulda, coulda, shoulda? Cool. What am I doing right now? What am I doing with what I actually have access to? What am I doing with the power that I actually have been able to amass? The capacity, the ability. When I say power, I mean your, your personal fire. That thing. What are you doing with that? Are you just using it to light up ghosts from the past? Woulda, coulda, shoulda? Or are we trying to make some shit happen right now? It's 2022. Okay. <laughs> I think you get me. I hope you get me. Um, because I'm really going off here alone in my house. <laughs> okay. For our lunar body work with our new moon in Capricorn, we are awakening stimulating for action, adorning or fortifying our bones, our skin, our hair, our nails, and our teeth. These are all body parts that are ruled by the sign of Capricorn. As I say every week, I am not a medical doctor in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I am a doctor of the cosmos. So if you are wanting to incorporate any of the information about uh, lunar rhythm health work, Talk with your trusted health advisor before you listen to me, some lady yelling on the internet. For our plant body work that we are doing with the moon in Capricorn, we are working on structures, fences, garden beds, window boxes, the pots and the planters, um, the plant stands. We are reinforcing them. We're making sure that they're good repair. It's been really cold. If you are in the Pacific Northwest, we have had a lot of ice and snow, and you might need to check and see if any of your pots have cracked outside or if somebody maybe needs to get brought inside so that they don't crack. Um, that kind of stuff. Okay. That I think is everything that I want to say about this uh, moon in Capricorn. As I said, previous at the beginning of the thing, 
um, for the Venus retrograde work that is kind of ongoing in the background and certainly will play into the work that we are doing here with this Capricorn moon week, uh, check out Amanda Moreno's Aquarian Spirals podcast because it's super cute and very informative. And for more information about the astrology of this particular new moon, check out A Ghost of a Podcast by Jessica Laniato. Um, all right, let's move on to the holy days of January 2nd. Actually, briefly before we get into the holy days, uh, there we have just a just a smidgen of astrology other than the moon stuff, which is Mercury in Aquarius trying the North Node in Gemini at one degree. The nodes are just about to leave Gemini and Sagittarius. Um, so we've, you know, we meaning me and lots of other metaphysical types have been talking about the nodes hanging out in Gemini and Sagittarius for the last two years or so. So go check that out. <laughs> uh, but they are just about to move into Taurus and Scorpio. Um, so this is kind of a last little moment that's happening here. Uh, the North node, South node speak to a few planets this week. Um, so on this day, Mercury in Aquarius trine, North Node in Gemini at one degree. Specifically, this really emphasizes studying, researching, investigation, but specifically gurus, teachers, mentors, um, those types sort of presenting themselves magically in your world. If those are people that you are looking for or groups that you're hoping to work with or, you know, a person that you're hoping to align yourself with, um, you know, that. As well, you might find yourself uh, speaking a lot about future plans. You might be listening to other people talk about their future plans. And moreover, even than all of that stuff, and this really kind of ties back into our, our lunar work, you might feel like the universe or source or your ancestors or your guides or your deities are trying to speak to you about the course of your life, your future, your goals. Um, uh, your future plans, all of that stuff. And, you know, when it's those characters that are speaking to us, sometimes it can speak in symbols. Sometimes they speak through the lyrics of songs or a line in a movie as you're walking past the TV or whatever. Um, so it's just a day to be very aware of messages coming through. How does that connect back to our Capricorn stuff? Well, if I'm listening to an inner narrative that's dredging up ghosts about what it coulda, shoulda, I may be drowning out the, but what about door number three message that's coming from the universe. So there's that. Okay. Now let us move on to the holy days of January 2nd. First and foremost, uh, from January 2nd to January 3rd, we have the feast of Hecate or Hecate. This is, um, a modern pagan adaptation uh, slash we have lots of hag and crone and grandma uh, energy and holidays here in this first week, uh, the last week of the year, as well as the first week of the year, kind of sitting on both sides of the moment of the new year. Um, so to have a feast to Hecate makes total sense. Um, this is a time period that is sometimes connected to her. Uh, sh her feast days are sort of marked as all throughout the lunar cycle. So the first couple of days while the moon is still dark, but new by some practices, yes, connected to Hecate. Uh, she is most often depicted holding a pair of torches, uh, a key, snakes, accompanied by dogs. Uh, later periods, she's depicted in triple form. She is very variously associated with crossroads, entrance ways, night, light, magic, witchcraft, knowledge of herbs and poisonous plants, ghosts, necromancy, and sorcery. And all of that is super good fun as well, uh, associated with a bunch of other stuff that's happening this week. Ha! I am sure it's just a coincidence, as we like to say here on the podcast. Also on this day, January 2nd, we have Heroes Day, also known as Ancestors Day, from our friends and ancestors in Haiti. On January 1st, in 1804, Haiti became an independent republic 
following the revolution, which had begun 13 years earlier as a rebellion of enslaved people against slavery and French colonialism. Previously known as Saint-Domingue, it was the most profitable colony in the world, generating greater revenue than all of the continental North American colonies combined. The 1804 Declaration of Independence abolished the colony of Saint-Domingue and reinstated the indigenous Teano name of Haiti. So here... On January 2nd, the ancestors who fought those battles are honored, as is the entirety of the spirit of Haiti itself as a culture and the land. Also on this day, we have from our Roman friends and ancestors, sacrifices to Aesculapius and Vediovis. Uh, Aesculapius uh, is a, or was, um, a hero and a god of medicine in ancient Greek religion and mythology. He is the son of Apollo. Uh, Asclepius represents the healing aspect of the medicinal arts. His daughters are Hygieia, Yasso, and Asiko, or excuse me, Akiso, uh, the goddess of healing and process, Agel, and Panacea. He has several sons as well. Uh, he was associated with the Roman slash Etruscan god Vidiovis and the Egyptian Imhotep. Um, he uh, is known by his snake entwined staff, which of course remains a symbol of medicine today, very similar to the Caduceus. And if you remember last week and the week before, we talked about uh, healers who walk with a staff, who um, handle snakes, all of that stuff. And so we have the continuation of that imagery here into the new year. All right, that's everything that we have for January 2nd. Let's move on to January 3rd. Okay, January 3rd, we have our waxing moon entering Aquarius. Okay, so we had some fun with our Capricorn moon. I know it was exciting, um, but we're going to move that work backwards or forwards, however you <laughs> want to imagine that, into uh, where the elders who parented us in our lives influenced our understanding about all of that stuff. So that could be a conversation in yourself of, you know, now that you have broken the spell around this ghost of a could have been, would have been, should have been past, maybe we are forgiving some of our elders around some of the things that they thought they needed to teach us about the world and society and how all those things fit together. Um, maybe, maybe we're forgiving them, right? Uh, but maybe, maybe we're not. Maybe we're holding them even more accountable at this point. Um, and we're looking at, you know, where they did or didn't hold us back, where we blame them for holding us back. Um, perhaps we're blaming them through their absence, too, right? Uh, we have a lot of folks that grew up without a dad um, or without that sort of dad type of parental figure. Perhaps the parent that you had was only able to parent you in certain ways and not bring in that dad energy, Um and, you know, for whatever reason, that's, again, doesn't have anything to do with gender. Uh, it's, you know, the, the elders are the parents that teach us about home life and our internal world versus the parents and elders that teach us about the world and the external life that we have. Um, you know, though, through their interpretation of um, the gravity or the severity of the outside world and society, our opinions about that stuff and our opinions about our capacity in those spaces are really formed and molded um, again. So this is the kind of work that this Aquarius is very heady. It's kind of abstract, but that's, you know, that's very <laughs> Aquarius as an air sign um, sort of asking us to, to renegotiate some of that stuff for ourselves, right? If these things aren't true, then the people I was blaming maybe aren't actually to blame and or right or here's the reality of the situation of how things were in the past. And that was really unfair. And these are some of the people that held up those unfair conditions, um, you know, and what effect that that has had on you in terms of your understanding, again, around your capacity in this lifetime 
to be able to do things, to make things happen for yourself, to be what you want to be in the world. It's heavy duty work, but here's what's up. When we push through all of this stuff and we really have these authentic conversations with ourselves, we, we come into a more mature place. We come into a more realistic place with these things. We free up so much stuff in ourselves. We are able to let go of things that we have carried for years, if not decades. We are able to let go of false self images. We are able to let go of false expectations that we had of other people or situations. And that all just gives us power. <laughs> that all just adds to our badassness and our capacity to do cool shit now. Um, it adds to our motivation to do cool shit now. Um, and be around cool people. And, and by cool, I mean loving and good for us and healthy. Um, all of that stuff. So this is witchcraft. It's a lot of like navel gazing and journaling and crying about things and drinking tea. And then fire, 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 fire. <laughs> but first, the crying in the tea. Okay. Uh, <laughs> for our lunar body, <laughs> with this waxing moon in Aquarius, we are awakening, adorning, stimulating for action, or fortifying our legs, in particular our knees. Um, and for our plant body work, we are harvesting, we are doing pest and disease control, especially again with our winter change uh, here. Uh, we are also plowing and weeding if that is appropriate for wherever you live. All right. Let me move on to the astrology that we have for this day. There's just a little bit, and it is Jupiter in Pisces square the North Node in Gemini at one degree. So yesterday we had, was it the Sun? No, Mercury hanging out and having a lovely time with the North Node. Now Jupiter's ready to argue. Okay, what does this manifest as? Oftentimes it can feel like really being at odds with the world or our collective about our values, our morals, our philosophical ideas, our future goals, the direction that we should, quote unquote, should be going, um, right? It really actually sits very comfortably, I think, or uncomfortably, as it were, with this Capricorn and Aquarius moon work that we're doing. Like, what are my goals? What am I investing in? Who told me I couldn't? Who told me I should? You know, that thing. How did I end up believing that these things were true about the world? How, how did I end up with this limited understanding of, of where I'm at and what I'm capable of doing? Um, you know, TLDR, capitalism. But, <laughs> but you know, and also, right. <laughs> so this Jupiter and Pisces square the North nodes really might bring up a lot of tension between you and your people. Um, you might be arguing about semantics. You may argue down deep enough to find out that you are actually on the same page with people, but just using very different words. Um, but uh, you may argue down into something and find out, wow, your, your base values are very different from my base values. Hmm. What am I going to do with that? What do I, what do I do about that? Because we can't necessarily just detach ourselves from our communities or our families or our friends. Um, and in my opinion, that's actually part of the work as a species that we have to do is to how to figure out um, how to get along with people and continue to work effectively in healthy ways, in progressive ways with people that we don't get along with, the people that we do not necessarily see eye to eye with. Is it possible? And how do we do it? Because otherwise, we're probably just going to kill each other. So, you know. No pressure, but hey, species, pull your head out of grass. All right, there's my witchcraft advice for the, the for the day. <laughs> uh, last thing about this Jupiter square, the North Node thing. Um, one of the ways that we may answer that tension is with overdoing it, um, overspending, um, overreaching, over you know, whatever it's Jupiter. So it's like more is more. And so we may be overcompensating as our means of compensating. So just be aware of, of your tendencies on this day. If you're having an argument with somebody, maybe some shit needs to get said, but also then don't necessarily go buy a hundred dollar sushi dinner as a means of apologizing because you brought down the heavy, um, that thing. Okay. Let's move on to the holy days of January 3rd. All right. January 3rd, holy days kicking off with the heliacal rising of the fixed star nunki n-u-n-k-i 
Uh, side note, um, either way, if you go to do research on this star, um, either put on a tinfoil hat or <laughs> uh, stick to reputable astrology sites because there is a whole lot of, I'm just going to say, interesting stuff on the internet connected to this fixed star. I'm not going to say if it's true or false. I'm just going to say it's very interesting and I tend to not fuck with it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this star is found on the vein of the arrow in the archer, AKA Sagittarius. Uh, the traditional name Nunki means the open sea in Latin, deriving from the Chaldean expression, the edict of the sea. Now, uh, I'm getting a lot of this from the website, The Astrology King, because uh, that person puts up really incredible information about the fixed stars. Um, when we come to the constellation Pisces, so a few months from now, we're going to find another star called Kulat Nuni, which we now call Alferg, um, with a very similar connotation to this Edict of the Sea thing. The immense and inexorable power of the sea has always impressed humanity with a sense of the divine power which alone can rule such a force and the idea of the divinity commanding it well suggested by both the edict title and the god is speaking theme okay so with, between this star and this other fixed star that w is in Pisces, which we will talk about in depth in a, in a couple of months when we get there, is really sort of giving us this idea of the mouth of God and the thing, the stuff that is coming out of the mouth of God, pouring out of the mouth of God. Um, and that aligns with some other very interesting stuff that we are going to see here in uh, just a minute as we go through this week. Okay. <laughs> cool things. Cool things. All right. Also here on January 3rd, running from January 3rd to January 7th this year is Losung Namsung from India, our friends and ancestors in India. Losung Namsung is a series of public holidays celebrating the winter harvest and the new year in India. Um, there are parts of India, there are parts of Nepal, there's parts of a few of the countries in that region of the world that have realigned their calendars to uh, our calendar. So January 1st is January is the new year. Um, but also for a lot of those regions, winter solstice is the new year, as we talked about in the last couple of uh, weeks of podcast. And so this is sort of a continuation of those more traditional holidays that are still connected to having a new year's at this time of year. Okay. Also on this day from our modern pagan calendars, we have the holiday of charming of the plow. Now this holiday is a modern pagan adaptation of the traditional European, specifically English, I think plow Monday, which this year falls on January 10th. And we are actually going to talk about it more then because that is the traditional day that this would be celebrated on. This is a modern pagan adaptation. We've talked about this, you know, I mentioned this every week because we have these holidays pretty much every week. Um, the Wheel of the Year is something that has become really popular for people to study, consider, research over the last 20 years or so. And it's cool. I'm glad. One of the phenomenon that has come about from that is a collection of websites and calendars that are found all over the internet that list dates. Some of those dates are totally historically accurate. Some of those dates are kind of historically accurate. They're based in historical stuff. Uh, some of those dates are just literally made up. Um, and I leave it up to you, the listener, uh, to decide if that matters to you or not. Um, you know, I think that there is a power or um, uh, a concentration, if you will, to being in alignment with stuff um, you know, if I can look back 8,000 years into history 
and align myself on the same day as this other thing was happening. That's cool, right? But some of that stuff we can't know. Like, it's literally lost to the ages. We're never going to know, right? Um, and so I think it's perfectly, perfectly reasonable um, that modern pagans are adapting the information and making decisions about stuff. Um, so charming of the plow, cool thing. Uh, modern, as I said, modern pagan adaptation uh, adapted by uh, a, a right wing asshole um, who was absolutely pushing a fascist agenda in um, uh, a Norse themed uh, religion. <laughs> um, but based in an idea that is absolutely historical. So let's move on, shall we? All right. <laughs> also on this day, from our Coptic Christian friends and ancestors, we have the Feast of the Archangel Gabriel or Gabrielle. And what is this Archangel best known for? Blowing the trumpet, making the announcement, um, is the patron saint of broadcasters and announcers and, um, you know, writers and, and journalists and stuff. Uh, it's funny because if you go through the Bible, Gabriel is never listed or named as the angel that blows a trumpet, but it has become understood that Gabriel is the announcer. All, I think it's very interesting that we have this holiday posited on the same day as the rising of the fixed star Nunki, which speaks haha, to that idea of the mouth of God and something pouring out of the mouth of God. Pretty cool stuff, man. Okay. From our Greek friends and ancestors, we have the month of Gamelion starting on this day because this is, in theory, the first day that we will be able to see the moon after it is new. Uh, from our Roman friends and ancestors, it is Calendae Ianuarie, meaning the calendar of January, the beginning of January. Uh, and in fact, it is because we have our calendar and our moons lined up this year for a little while. Pretty cool. <laughs> All right, let's move on to January 4th. All right, we have arrived at January 4th. We still have our waxing moon hanging out in Aquarius. So we are still doing that super fun work of blaming our dads for everything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Fuck it. Uh, and then um, we have no astrology for this day of note. <laughs> Just my sassy ass over here. Uh, all right, let's move on to the holy days of January 4th. Uh, we have the heliacal rising of the fixed star Acelia or Askela. Uh, this is a triple star system in the armpit of the archer. And that's literally all I have to say about it. <laughs> But we are, yes, moving through the fixed stars that are associated with the constellation Sagittarius, even though we are very far into Capricorn season because of the precession of the equinoxes. Um, because nothing in space actually holds still. Nothing in our universe. Everything wiggles. Everything wobbles. And that brings me to Perihelion. <laughs> um the Parahelion uh, is a event that happens every single year as the Earth orbits around the sun. So the Earth orbits the sun in an elliptical path, which means that there is one point on the path closer to the sun and one point that is farther away or farthest away. Um, because our orbit is not a perfect circle, around the sun. It is more of an oval shape and the sun does not sit perfectly in the center of that. It, our, our orbit leans to one side a little bit. So at part of the orbit, we are closest to the sun. At part of the orbit, we are the furthest away from the sun. Due to variations in the eccentricity of the Earth's orbit, girl heard same we're all eccentric here. Okay. The dates of the earth <laughs> reaching its perihelion or aphelion are not fixed, meaning that from year to year, it's going to change a little bit. So for example, in the year 1246 CE, December, uh, the solstice 
was the same day as the Parahelion. Um, but since then, the Parahelion and the Eighth Helion, which is the point where it's the furthest away, uh, those dates have drifted by a day every 58 years. In the short term, the dates can vary up to two or three days from one year to another. So last year, I think it was on the third. It could be the second, the third, the fourth. I think it might even swing as far as the sixth some years. Um, however, this I think is really, really cool. <laughs> uh, it's something to sort of keep in mind about things. Mathematicians and astronomers estimate that in 6430 CE, so, you know, 4,000-ish <laughs> years from now, uh, the perihelion will coincide with the March equinox. So cool stuff, right? Weird, cool, trippy. Um, I think that it's really neat that we are uh, at the closest point in our orbit to the sun here in the darkest part of the year. That's really, really cool symbolism to me. Neato stuff. All right. Also on this day from our Tiwa friends and ancestors, we have the turtle dance. The turtle dance is easily the most important public religious ceremony of the San Juan calendar. This is a uh, San Juan Pueblo, Pueblo Native Americans. Um, defining as it does the end of one year and the beginning of a new one. The dance is named for the turtle believed to be the first hibernating being that moves about after the year has turned. Thus, the turtle is seen as symbolizing the beginning of each new annual cycle. And also on this day from our Roman friends and ancestors, we have the festival of Compitalia. This was a festival celebrated once a year in honor of the Lares Compitales, or the household deities of the crossroads, to whom sacrifices were offered at the places where two or more ways meet. The word comes from the Latin compitum, aka a crossway. And of course, we just had a goddess of the crossroads, Hecate, honored, you know, two days before on January 2nd. So all of this is lining up very nicely. We also had festivals last week, and I think the week before, to other sets of layers and other sets of household deities. Um, again, with the new year, you had this whole everything stops and is refreshed and restarted again kind of thing. So this too is a part of that process. All right, let's move on to January 5th. All right, January 5th, we have a waxing crescent moon in Pisces at zero degrees at 527 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Later in the day and the next day for everybody else around the planet. Officially, this is a day for daydreaming, straight up. Um, as much as is reasonable for your life and your lifestyle, I know, <laughs> so bullshit that we have to put pants on, but nah. whatever, regardless, let yourself drift and daydream as much as is possible on this day. In particular, January 6th and January 7th also are pretty spacey and dreamy. But, a pit but in particular on this day, and we'll get into why here in just a second, but um, let me say this, um, because when I saw when I was like, yay, it's Pisces, it's like a little reprieve, right? But it kind of felt like a weird break between this kind of heavy duty work that we were doing with the moon in Capricorn and then the moon in Aquarius, you know, you're not my real dad, like all that stuff, right? Or you are my real dad, uh, that. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, just take a day off and daydream and blitz out. I'm like, okay, well, I mean, I can get that from the escapist sort of <laughs> standpoint of like, that work was hard. I don't want to think anymore, you know, and that is completely legitimate. Um, I think I have said every single month for the last year, when we have a moon in Pisces, whether it is waxing or waning, take the day off from thinking if it's at all possible. Give yourself a break. You are welcome to escape. Enjoy your escapist behaviors and modalities, you know, have at it. Uh, the world sucks right now and, um, you know, probably isn't going to not suck anytime soon. <laughs> so if you have a moment to GTFO I, as your witch, I recommend it. Um, but within reason, right? There's still stuff that has to happen, right? Diapers still have to get changed. Um, uh, dishes still have to get washed. Jobs still got to get worked. Commutes still have to be commuted. You know, all that, right? So... 
So I started to really think about like, how does this actually connect with the lunar work of earlier in the week versus just like as an escapist moment, like do these things actually connect together? And you guys know that I get a lot of my moon information for this podcast from the book Moon Phase Astrology by Raven Caldera. Love. This is a really cool book. I've learned a lot working with it. Um, this whole podcast is going to be all references to other people's stuff, apparently, So, <laughs> which I'm fine with. Go check it out. It's good. But, you know, I was reading through what they have to say about this particular moon. And at the end of every moon, you know, a few pages of information, they'll have quotes from people from throughout time to kind of help express the idea in other ways. And this quote for me linked everything together. This is a quote from Anais Nin. Uh, and again, like I said, I think it really helps make this all make sense. Dreams pass into the reality of action. From the action stems the dream again, and this interdependence produces the highest form of living. And that made everything kind of click together for me. I was like, yes, of course. We do need to do this gritty work in Capricorn. We do need to do this really abstract intellectualizing in Aquarius. And then we do need to go into the fantasy world and dream for a while, recuperate from that work. Where can we expand in our fantasy and our imaginative life? Because maybe we have laid a burden down or let go of something that we've been carrying for a long time that we have decided is not true for us anymore. And how, how does that free us now? Um, and then after we have been in the fantasy realm, we are going to bring some of that back into the physical world and continue to build and back and forth and back and forth. And I was like, yes, yay. I love this book. Okay. It all made sense. All right. <laughs> While we are working with our waxing crescent moon in Pisces, we are awakening, stimulating for action, adorning or fortifying our legs, in particular the ankles and the feet. So yes, uh, it is a holy act to get the, the pedicure. Um, and <laughs> for our plant body work, we are planting, we are transplanting, and we are grafting. Okay, now briefly, let's talk about the astrology of this day because it completely supports this lunar work that we are doing. We have on this day, Venus retrograde in Capricorn, sextiling Neptune and Pisces at 20 degrees. This transit is creative, romantic, imaginative, sensitive, and very focused on beauty. This is a fantastic day for being around and making art, music, poetry, being in beautiful surroundings, being beautiful, all of that stuff. This could be a day where you are also super sensitive to the needs and the feelings of your loved ones. It is a wonderful day for hanging out and enjoying fantasy and illusion versus reality. The only thing that I will say about this entire transit and the lunar work of this day, because it's all fantasy, beauty, love, mystical bullshit, right? Yay. Oh, it's lovely. Okay. Here's the one thing is we can get so out of touch from the physical reality, we forget to take care of our physical form. So make sure you're drinking water. Make sure you have something to eat. Make sure if you're cold, you put some socks on. Make sure if you're hot, you change your clothes, open a window, right? Like to don't just drift away and forget about the maintenance of the body. Take care of yourself, that thing. Okay, now let us go on to the holy days of, what is this, January 5th? I don't even know where I am in time and space anymore. Uh, <laughs> what do we have? We have two uh, holidays on this day from our Catholic friends and ancestors. We have Twelfth Night. Twelfth Night, also known as Epiphany Eve, is a festival in some branches of Christianity, and I would I would suggest that this is a cultural holiday in a lot of places as well. Um, that takes place on the last night of the twelve days of Christmas, marking the coming of the Epiphany. A superstition in some English-speaking countries suggests that it is unlucky to leave Christmas decorations hanging after Twelfth Night. 
Uh, and this actually connects to um, a lot of the traditions variously attached to the festivals of Candlemas or Imbolc, as well as Good Friday, Shrove Tuesday, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so this whole time period is sort of a time where there's like this disengaging from the Yule time energy and a like redirecting of in bulk season is coming in a couple of weeks. Let's start focusing on that. Dang it. Um, and that really is sort of about that whole thing of, um, at winter solstice, really sort of letting go to the chaos, letting go to the darkness, letting go to the free fall into the black cold night. <laughs> you know, paganism. It's it's super fun. Uh, <laughs> um, but this is part of why for the ancients, the Yule season was actually quite spooky, right? Is because there was sort of this embracing of everything's backwards, everything's upside down, life is death, death is life, the sun is dying, everything is, you know, everything is topsy-turvy. And then after this time period um, of a few weeks of sort of embracing this cold darkness, there we, we will start to see as we move through January, not quite yet, but we will start to see as we move through January, this insistence on no, the order is coming back and the light is coming back. This is the last, uh, you know, moments of the chaos. And then the order is coming back. And so this, this sort of kicks off some of that stuff. Um, okay. Other popular customs associated with Twelfth Night are eating king cake, uh, singing Christmas carols, chalking the door, having one's house blessed, merrymaking, and attending church services, whether you are a Christian or a religious person or not. Again, this kind of bleeds into cultural stuff. We will also see a lot of this stuff, uh, Twelfth Night, Epiphany, Epiphany Eve, woven into our um, Mardi Gras celebrations that we see in the um, southeast of America. Also on this day from our Hopi and Zuni friends and ancestors, we have the antelope, buffalo, and deer dances. These are community prayers and medicine honoring the spirits of the land in their winter forms as animals, weather, and ancestors. It's a five-day ceremony. A whole bunch of stuff happens. There's games. There's honoring of the various members of the community. Um, there's divinatory practices. Uh, a whole bunch of really, really cool stuff. A lot of it is kept private on purpose. It's meant to be something that you personally experience. You don't read about or you know, hear some other person's accounting of it that you personally experience it. Uh, and if you are ever welcomed onto the reservation and get an opportunity to participate in this, I would highly recommend it. Um, really, really beautiful stuff. Okay, let us move on to January 6th. But before that, how about an ad? Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, if you love this podcast, you can support this work through Patreon. Thank you a bajillion billion times. See, the, the sirens are going off even as I say it. Um, thank you so, so much to my patrons. Um, you guys don't even know. <laughs> you don't even know. Thank you so much. Uh, you can sub for as little as a dollar if you just think this podcast is dope and you want to support it. Uh, I don't run ads on the podcast. Um Partly because I don't want to, and partly because I won't get paid even if I do. Uh, so screw them, man. Um, you can sub, as I said, for as little as a buck or $5, even if you want to just support the podcast. And this is plenty of information. But if you want even more information, um, you know, extra podcasts, extra videos, extra information about the Wheel of the Year, magical practices, tarot, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, subbing at the higher levels, you get all kinds of cool free stuff. And at the even higher levels, uh, you get free readings every month with me um, to be able to integrate all of this information into your personal life based on what's going on in your natal chart and all of that other good stuff. Join and change your life forever. Or, you know, whatever. Uh, also, as I have said about 150 times over the last few weeks, I will be announcing some workshops and some standalone classes extremely soon. Um, the Welcome to Tarot six-week 
fundamental introduction to tarot workshop will be coming back very, very soon. I will also be uh, bringing four standalone classes at the end of that workshop um, that I'm pretty excited about. And I think it's going to be really, really cool as well as some other good stuff. Patrons will hear about it first, and then folks who are subscribed to my newsletter, and then I will announce it publicly here, as well as on social media, etc., etc. Thanks so much for the support. If you can't support financially, I completely understand because life sucks on Earth right now. It's too expensive for everything. Um, tell a friend, share it on social media, uh, give it a thumbs up. If you're feeling especially hedonistic, you can leave a rating or a review. All right. That's the end of the ad. Let's get back to the podcast. Okay. January 6th, our moon is still hanging out in Pisces. So we are still dreaming, writing poetry, wearing lace next to a, a lake somewhere, eating fresh fruit or something. I don't know. Uh, there's also no astrology of note for this day. So let us head directly into the holy days. And we start with the heliacal rising of the fixed star Manubrium. Manubrium, Manubrium. The traditional name Manubrium comes from the Latin word manus, which means hand. Despite this, the star appears to mark the archer's right ear. I think it's funny that this would cause confusion. If you have ever shot a bow and arrow, you know that when you draw that string back, your right hand will go right next to your ear because uh, you are looking down the, the shaft of the arrow to where you are going to ultimately be shooting. Anyways, also on this day, we have the heliacal rising of the fixed star Vega. The traditional name uh, Vega was originally Wega, as in W-E-G-A, which came from the Arabic word Weki, which means falling or landing. This in turn comes from An Nasir al Waki, which means the falling eagle. The star Vega or Wega is one of the brightest stars in the heavens. And at various times in Earth's history, Vega has been the pole star or the star that's at the very top of the sky for us in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, Vega is the principal star in the constellation Lyra and the Babylonians called Vega the star of the queen of life. Also on this day, we have from our pagan, modern pagan Wheel of the Year calendars, Triple Goddess Day. And this is uh, a moment of reverence for the goddess in her triple aspect, as well as all goddesses that are depicted in a triplicity or in three parts. Um, having our three-faced Hecate, uh, you know, earlier in the week, again, pretty cool. Um, but also, I think that this is in uh, response to another holiday that is happening on this day from our Christian friends and ancestors, Epiphany or Three Kings Day. <laughs> just, just thinking. Epiphany is celebrated on January 6th, marking the end of the Christmas season officially. So that's the, t the end of the 12 days of Christmas. The other names for Epiphany are are Three Kings Day, Twelfth Day, Theophany, and Little Christmas. Epiphany commemorates the manifestation of God to the world through Jesus Christ. The term epiphany comes from a Greek word meaning appearance or manifestation or revelation. Also on this day, from our Slavic friends and ancestors, we have the Holy Festival of Turisi, this is the holiday of the bull, Yartur, a symbol of the strong power of life and fertility. People today celebrate this day by donning masks, parading, and imitating the great bull. Younger and older folk alike join in playing games of enjoyment called Turisi. This also ends the New Year holiday. And so again, we see that happening over and over where these uh, we have these multi-day New Year, winter solstice, Christ mass festivals 
that are all sort of coming to a close at this point. Like I said earlier, we're, you know, we're going to start to see this line of holidays that sort of mark the like, okay, that whole gate into the black void thing. Yeah. We're closing that now officially. Okay. <laughs> Also on this day, we have the Dies Natalis of the Shrine of Vika Pota from our Roman friends and ancestors. As we've talked about previously, the Dies Natalis is the day of birth. Um, and that would have been the day that the uh, temple had its first stone laid for the foundation or the last stone was laid or the temple was finally opened or some other pivotal moment in the creation and the opening of the temple. The Dies Natalis or the birthday of the temple, specifically of this deity, Vikapota. In ancient Roman religion, Vikapota was a goddess whose shrine was located at the foot of the Velian Hill on the site of the Domus um, of uh, Publius Valerius Publicola. This location would place the temple on the same side of the Velia as the Forum and perhaps not far from the Regia, meaning that this deity was potentially connected with some really powerful deities. Perhaps they were, um, you know, a, a version of them. And, and so... Uh, Vikapota is the mother of Dispiter. Although usually identified with Jupiter, Dispiter is here treated as a separate deity. And in the view of Arthur Bernard, Bernard Cook, the, the writer, um, should perhaps be regarded as the Chthonic Dispater. Dispater or Dispater. And that's literally father of the dead. Dis dead or underworld pater father um so that is you know jupiter jupiter yeah pater father connected to zeus all of that stuff um yes that so vikapota was definitely a goddess um so perhaps uh a female version of this energy perhaps this energy was masculine masculinized version of vikapota who knows, because we've lost a lot of that stuff, but something there, something there. Um, their name uh, derives from Vicendi Atke Potiundi, which means conquering and gaining mastery. Interesting stuff. Okay, let's move on to January 7th. I actually, briefly, that little phrase, conquering and gaining mastery, very Capricorn, isn't it? Really? Like, think about that. That's very, very Capricorn. Hmm. That's really cool. Okay. January 7th. January 7th. January 7th. Waxing moon in Aries. Waxing moon in Aries. Yeah. Did you think we were going to have a nice week? No. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right. We have our waxing moon entering Aries. Uh, and this is, I'm listening this January 7th because that's what it's happening for me. This is actually happening at 9.25 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So later in the day slash the next day for everybody else around the planet. Um, okay. So what are we doing with this waxing moon hanging out in Aries? Well, first off, we're coming back from the dream time, Right. Um, Pisces like gives us a little moment of reprieve the moon hanging out in Pisces like gives us that moment of just like let's have it be cute for just a fucking minute please thank you um, and now January 7th is like hey we got to come back to the world and what are we doing when we come back we are taking a look at our goals and our aspirations our dreams right that we've just been hanging out with and we ask ourselves are we still invested do we still care? What are we passionate about? What are we carrying a torch for? Um, you know, when the moon is in Aries, we can be really driven, we can be really excited and really passionate about things. And so, you know, what I what I would encourage you to explore is what are you urged to do? What are you urging for? Um, you know, what are you urging towards with this Aries moon? Now, that being said, 
this moon is not the super bestest um, for action. It's not the most perfectest ever for doing the thing, but it is fantastic for feeling into your passions and feeling into what am I excited about? What am I freaked out about? What am, what I what can I not stop talking about? What can I not stop thinking about? What am I just like so ready for? What do I really want to produce? When we think about Aries, um, you know, we want to think about, you know, a lot of the talk in astrology specifically about Aries is about me, myself, my sense of self, my my self image and the way that I'm perceived by other people, but also a lot of what we are doing with our Aries energy is we want to often blaze a trail. We want to forge a path and it into areas or into goals or into places where at the very least we have never gone before. If the Aries energy is really strong in us, we want to go in places where nobody's ever gone before or very few people have dared to tread. Um, and so all of that stuff, right? It's not the best moon to act on, right? Coming out of that Pisces fog, right? <laughs> I'm just like, woo, we're all covered in glitter and can't remember anything from the last 48 hours. It's fantastic. We love Pisces, but that's not the best place to act from, right? But it is a great place to come back and go, oh, okay, I've had this little mini vacation for my spirit. And now what do I care about? What am I excited about? What am I yearning towards? What am I urging towards? What am I driving towards? That thing. That's what this moon wants us to focus on. Okay, for our lunar body work, we are awakening, we are stimulating for action, we are adorning or fortifying our scalp, our head, our hair, our face, our eyes, and our sinuses. These are all the parts of the body ruled by Aries. So yes, in fact, going and getting your hairdo is a holy act. Going and getting your eyelash extension, getting your eyebrows waxed, that's a holy act, baby. Be cute about it. Let's keep it delicious. <laughs> and for our plant body work, we are harvesting. This is another day where we are checking our plants for disease and for pests. Um, we are pruning on this day to encourage wintertime growth cycles. And if it's appropriate for you, weeding and plowing is also good for this day. Um, we have no astrology of note for this day. So I'm just going to move directly on to the holy days after I take a sip of this very refreshing water. Oh, ah, delicious. All right. From our Oneida friends and ancestors, we have the midwinter ceremony or festival. The midwinter ceremony is celebrated five days after the new moon in January, which we just had right at the beginning of this week. So here we are. Um, this is a time of renewing responsibilities for the coming year. There is a lot more to say about that. I absolutely recommend um, looking up this holiday. I am uh, not going to attempt to pronounce the word because I have multiple times. In fact, I even looked up a video of a person saying it and I cannot repeat it. <laughs> I am going to continue to practice until I learn how to say this correctly, but until then I'm not going to say it, <laughs> but it is the Oneida Midwinter Festival and it's really beautiful. There's a lot of really beautiful customs along with this. Um, also on this day from our Orthodox Christian friends and ancestors. We have the Nativity of the Savior. So here in this week is where uh, Orthodox Christians will celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, the Nativity. Um, for regular Catholics and Christians, it's December 25th, very closely aligned to the winter solstice. But for here, for our Orthodox Catholic uh, and Orthodox Christian friends um, and ancestors, it is actually closer to the perihelion, which I think is really cool. <laughs> um, and also on this day, from our Shinto friends and ancestors, we have the festival of Nanakusa no Seku, or the Feast of the Seven Herbs. 
This is a day on which people in Japan customarily eat a seven herb rice porridge called Nanakusa Gayu uh, to give the stomach some TLC after the indulgences of the New Year holiday, which I think is really cool. <laughs> um, and we talked about this last week too, right? So this is the thing. Um, originally celebrated on the seventh day of the first lunar month, which would still more or less be this day or actually two days from, from here be January 9th. Um, it was moved to January 7th when the solar calendar was adopted. Uh, the seven herbs are water dropwort, shepherd's purse, cudweed, chickweed, nipplewort, turnip, and radish. And I believe, I believe cudweed, we also call lamb's ear here in America. I believe that that is the same plant. Um, but yeah, cool stuff, right? Specifically, like having a day where we're eating a dish that is really about like centering and grounding yourself and giving the body a little bit of a break. And again, that idea of we are breaking from this multi-day festival moment that we've been jamming out for the last, you know, week or two weeks or 10 days or however long it's been, whether it was around winter solstice that you started or around December 25th that you started, or even, um, you know, January, December 31st, January 1st, where you started here, seven days in eight days into January, we're now officially saying, okay, we're going to, we're going to put a seal on that festival season, clear out and then start to focus on the next portion of the, of the cycle, the wheel, what have you. Cool stuff. All right, let's move on to January 8th. All righty, my friends, that brings us to the last day of this lunar week, January 8th. Uh, we still have our waxing moon hanging out in Aries, so we are still, you know, yelling at God or whatever it is that we're doing with our Aries energy. <laughs> um, and we have a little tiny, deep, tiny, just a smidgy of uh, of <laughs> astrology. Um, suddenly, here at the end of the podcast, I'm done talking. Apparently. <laughs> My brain is like, mm -mm, ma'am, we're done. Uh, good thing I took some notes. Okay, we have uh, for January 8th, the sun conjunct Venus retrograde in Capricorn at 18 degrees. Um, what could this feel like? This could feel like a super deep drive to express yourself through creativity and through your relationships. And then that's interesting and cool stuff. Um, it's a great day for socializing. It's a great day for hanging out with friends safely, right? We're not done. The worldwide panini still on the griddle. Uh, so put on your jacket, put on the other jacket, and then put on that other jacket, put on five pairs of gloves and go and hang out outside at the park with your friends. But this is a good day for doing that. Uh, go for a walk in the snow, all of that stuff. Um, but what I think is really interesting is that idea of trying to or wanting to express yourself through your relationships. So this day could bring up all kinds of stuff around who am I when I'm with these people? Who am I without these people? I think that part of the conversation has actually come up a lot for some folks over the last two years. Um, you know, folks who maybe spent a lot of time at the club or spent a lot of time at the bar or spent a lot of time at the roller rink or spent a lot of time at the whatever, and they were partying the whole time. Um, and, you know, you have your show friends, right? But they're not really necessarily people that you know, know, right? You don't necessarily know things about these folks. They're just people that you saw at the rave all the time, that thing. So today, that day, this day, <laughs> This this particular astrological transit, um, Sun conjunct Venus, might really bring up a lot of that stuff for you. Um, generally speaking, the Sun hanging out with Venus is a happy time. So if it is a funky moment, it's probably a short-lived funky moment, or you may feel more inclined to go into that place with yourself and have that conversation. What I will also say about this day is this. 
be careful not to overextend yourself. Um, indulgence might seem like the most reasonable thing in the world. Uh, remember, we have indulgence at home, okay? <laughs> Uh, but that's a way sometimes when we're having a, a, a tense moment and Venus is involved or a tense moment and Jupiter is involved, sometimes our autopilot response is, I'll pick up the check and that'll make everybody happy and everything will turn out fine. Or I'll provide all of the drugs and everybody will be happy and everything will turn out fine. Or I'll do all of the work or I'll say, you know what I mean? It's that. So that would be the only thing to watch for with the astrology of this day is overextending yourself, over committing, um, particularly with money, that thing. Okay. What are our holy days of this day? Well, we only have three um, and they're all pretty cool. To kick it off, from our Eastern European friends and ancestors, we have Baba Den, which is the day of the midwife. Um, the name Baba Den comes from the Bulgarian word Baba, which means old woman or grandmother. And of course, we all know the infamous Baba Yaga, um, but there are lots of Babas. And so this is absolutely the day of celebrating Babas in all of their forms, the grandmothers in all of their forms. Um, Baba Den is also the day of the midwife. Not sure if I said that or not. <laughs> um, and so this is a celebration of the old women or the grandmothers uh, because they would have been the women who had experience in delivering babies. So they were the village midwives, but also they are the people that oversee the delivery of our character and our personality and all of that stuff too. Um, so on January 8th at dawn, Mothers of toddlers and babies go to the village fountain to get fresh water. They take the water along with a bar of soap and a new towel to the midwife's house uh, to do a rite of washing her hands. The women uh, hand the midwife the soap, help her wash her hands, and then they offer the towel to her as a gift. And if the woman wants to get pregnant, the midwife will wipe her hands off on the young woman's skirts. Uh, which is like a blessing, a spell, you might say, <laughs> of uh, transferring that energy to, you know, the area of their body where the baby is going to come from. That's where the apron is going to drape over, right? Pretty cool stuff. The midwife also receives as gifts shirts and socks, uh, which the mothers throw over their right shoulder. I love. Um, on her part, she gives the children she helped deliver a silver coin, socks, shirts. She also washes the children's faces with water, um, which once being used by the midwife is now believed to have purifying powers. So there is, you know, a lot of paganism stuff woven into that, right? This idea of these older women, younger women, and the children uh, that are sort of the offspring of the efforts of all of these women, and this water idea, this purification idea, clothing and silver coins being passed back and forth. Of course, silver coins, of course, are connecting us directly to the moon um, and all of the goddesses therein. So really, really cool stuff. Lots in that. Um, definitely there's more than what I'm saying here. Um, so go and research that if that's something that's interesting to you. Baba Den, the day of the midwife. All right. Also on this day from our Roman ancestors and friends, we have the day of Justica. Justica was the goddess of justice, fair judgments, and the rights established by custom and law. Very Capricorn, right? Um, she was one of the three Hore, the goddesses of the seasons and the keepers of the gates of heaven. Um, her sisters were Eunomia, which means good order, and Irene, which means peace. Like her siblings, she probably also represented an aspect of uh, springtime growth slash the growth cycle. 
Um, but this is yet another moment of the Hore and the Lairs and the Tempestes all being worshipped. We talked about this last week and the week before in the podcast, um, where the Romans are really just sort of like going down the list of all of the goddesses and gods and deities that were in charge of the hours, the days, the weeks, the months, the turning of the year, the weather, the seasons, day, night, crossroads, all of that stuff, doorways and thresholds and, and all of those types of things, all of that stuff being honored here in the new year and in this first week of the new year, because of course, the new moon coincided with the beginning of the month. Last but not least uh, for this day, we have the Feast of Our Lady of Prompt Succor. And this is a holiday that is celebrated by pagans and Catholics. And this is another one of those holidays that very much has stretched into just being a cultural uh, holiday or festival as much as it is a Catholic or pagan. Standing in the central niche over the main altar in the Ursuline Convent Chapel in the French Quarter of glorious good old New Orleans, she welcomes all who come to honor her, to thank her for intercession, and to pray for her help and protection. Uh, and she protects not only from global war and devastating storms, but also in overcoming the greatest enemies, poverty, illness, ignorance, racism, and violence. Feast for Our Lady of Prompt Succor. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of the week. And let us uh, check out the roundup and call it. All right, my friends, uh, the wrap up for this week goes something like this. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> losing it okay uh for our lunar phases we are moving from capricorn through to aries uh these are both cardinal signs so we are still moving with that initiatory energy of the cardinal signs with the start of yule season the start of winter and the start of the new year all these cardinal signs are like yes let's initiate let's birth let's begin um, for our astrology this week, what have we got going on? We have uh, on January 2nd, Mercury in Aquarius trine the North Node in Gemini at one degree. On January 3rd, we have Jupiter in Pisces square the North Node in Gemini at one degree. On the 5th of January, we have Venus in retrograde in Capricorn uh, sextiling Neptune in Pisces at 20 degrees. And on the 8th of January, we have the Sun in Capricorn conjunct Venus retrograde at 18 degrees. Next week, we have our full moon in Cancer. That's going to be our first full moon of 2022. Cute. Um, and we also have a Mercury in retrograde. It's fine. Everybody calm down. Breathe. Get a paper bag. Relax. Uh, but yeah, no, we do have a Mercury retrograde coming up. So hitch up your panties, friends, because it's going to be a wild ride. No, it's it's actually not that epic. But, <laughs> but you know, Mercury retrograde anymore in this world is sort of like, <laughs> um, That's everything. I hope you had a fantastic new year. I hope you stayed home. I hope you hung out with people that you love and see every day. Um and I hope you played it safe because fuck the coronavirus. I'm totally over it. And I want to go back to my normal goddamn life. Um, here is my last little thing that I'm going to say about this subject uh, for this podcast. <laughs> uh, there has been a lot of demonizing in our country uh, when it comes to anti-vaxxers and people who won't get vaccinated or can't get vaccinated. Um, and, uh, eh, you know, okay, sure. Um, is it irresponsible? I think so. It's my opinion that yes, it's irresponsible. Um, if you can't get vaccinated, that's a whole other conversation. There's nothing you can do about it. If you won't get vaccinated, but you can, that it's perfectly healthy for you, but you won't do it. I don't think it's responsible and I don't think that you are 
supporting society, but there's plenty of reasons why people would not want to support society or feel that they have a responsibility to do that or whatever. So again, that's my opinion. But here's my, my meatier take on this. This is why I'm bringing this up is this. The number of people who will not get vaccinated is incredibly small compared to the number of people who absolutely want to be vaccinated and they can't get a vaccine because the first world won't share the fucking vaccines with the second and the third world. That's what's up. That's why we keep having mutations and iteration on iteration of this fucking virus is because money, because the pharmaceutical companies are completely in control of this conversation and it's absolute bullshit. And there are hundreds of thousands of people getting sick and thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people dying around the planet that totally don't have to. Um, and it's those folks not being given access to the vaccine. Those are the communities where the virus is mutating faster and more aggressively than anywhere else on earth. And we in the first world nations, 100% uh, could, could be curtailing that process, could be affecting that process. That's my rant. I'm done. <laughs> But God damn it. <laughs> also, also, yeah, see, I'm not done. Also, uh, we absolutely should still be having unemployment benefits. We absolutely should be having stimulus checks. This is getting worse, not better. Uh, we've just blown out of the water like single day uh, people being diagnosed, single day uh, people being uh, admitted into the hospital for treatment. Like we are just, it's it's a bad scene. It's a bad scene. And it's likely to get worse in the next couple of weeks because everybody just went and did a bunch of stuff for Christmas and for New Year's and Thanksgiving. General strike. You know, there's a meme going around where folks are like, you know, the CDC uh, has reduced the, the stay at home time, the quarantine time from 10 days to five days. Why? Literally because of the economy, literally because of the economy. Um, so in other words, what you're telling us is 10 days of us staying at home shuts down the economy. Good to know. Good to know. So in dreaming about your future this week, in dreaming about uh, what you're investing in, in dreaming about those people and those structures and those institutions in society that said, you can't, you'll never, it's impossible where was that a lie? Where was there maybe another agenda in place trying to keep you scared? That's all. All right. There's your um, you know, <laughs> leftist rant at the end of your witchcraft podcast. <laughs> Get involved with a mutual aid group in your community now. That's that's my last thing. Okay, Ed, go and get a mani petty. <laughs> I love you, heathens. We are going to build a better world. We are building a better world. We've been building a better world. We are witnessing the death throes of dinosaurs. We got this. Mwah. I love you all. Blessed be.